Anyway, today let's see how we can prove that the function x squared is continuous everywhere on its domain. Of course, this right here is our good old friend. The graph of x squared looks like this. Of course it's continuous, but of course we cannot just put down of course on the board. <laughs> so how can we give a legitimate proof for this right here? Well, let me tell you, it's all about using definitions. So first we'll have to talk about what's the definition for a function to be continuous. And before everything, let's go ahead and write down PF, because this way at least we have something on the board. At least we have something on our uh, exam, right? <laughs> all right, so now, when a function is continuous, well, we must show that, so let me just write this down right here for you guys. We must show, by definition, the limit when x is approaching, well, let's say some number a, right? Of the function, which is x squared, if the function is continuous, then all we have to do is put the a into the function, so we just get a squared right here. And because we want to show that the function is continuous everywhere on its domain, so right here, right? So we have to show that this right here is true for all a on this interval right here. So I'll just write it like this. All right. So we do have the a right here already. And now, here's the deal. How do we continue? Yes, we have a limit statement right here. Yes, we will have to use the epsilon delta definition. I actually did a video last semester, and uh, this right here is like a little extension of it. So have a look, right? Man, epsilon delta definition, one of the uh, calc one or maybe real analysis nightmare and all that stuff, right? Anyway, though, remember the four steps, the four keywords, right? First, go ahead and write down given, right? Given, and the first statement is that given epsilon is greater than zero, right? You always write that down first. Next, you write down choose. Delta to be, well, do you know what delta is? No, right? Do you think I know what delta is? Let me tell you, I don't know either. Nobody knows what delta is right now. So what do we do? Don't worry, just leave it. I know you might feel uncomfortable of doing so, but don't worry, just leave it. Just remember that we will have to come back to this right here later on though, right? Just leave it for now. All right, next, what we do is we are going to say suppose, and you have to remember this inequality. First, you put on the absolute value, and then you do x minus a. So this is like saying the distance between x and also your given value a, right? And you have to make sure that this right here is in between of zero, and this right here has to be less than delta, right? So again, you just write it down like this. And then the last part, which is going to be the one that requires the most amount of work, is that you check. You first, you put on the absolute value, and you do the function minus the limit, which is x squared minus a squared. Okay, quick reminder, the limit as x approaching a of a function is equal to l means for any epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta greater than zero such that the distance between the function and the limit is less than epsilon whenever the distance between x and a is less than delta. As you can see, this picture illustrates that idea. And if you remember, given, choose, suppose, and check, I think this is going to help you out tremendously. And then of course, remember the other parts as well. Now, look at this. Can we do algebra? Yes. So we will do algebra for this. This right here, we can factor it, right? We get x minus a times x plus a. And now here's the deal. The absolute value of a product is the same as the product of the absolute value. So we can just say absolute value of x minus a times x plus a in the absolute value, like that. All right, have a look. We have x minus a is less than delta, and that's exactly what we have right here. So we can replace this part and say this is less than delta. Very nice. Yeah? But now, what is this? Hmm, we have x plus a. And now, let me tell you, for the quadratic situation, this is how we can do it. First, we go back to the delta part right here. Remember, we have to still choose delta, right? And you always just put down minimum and then the brace like this and just always choose one. Why one? Because one is easy. Can we use one half? Yes. And I will show you what will change later on. Can you use square root of two? Yes, but no, don't do that. 
So in the previous upload, I made a mistake when I was trying to get a bound for the absolute value of x plus a. I am very sorry about that. But luckily, we have Victor because he showed us how to use the triangle inequality to get a bound for this right here. And the steps are so clean. So let me demonstrate that for you guys. See, I told you guys already that easy statements are frustrating to prove, right? <laughs> but I'm actually pretty lucky though because I didn't erase the book for two days. So, <laughs> And yes, if you want to see the previous upload on what my mistake was, the link will be in the description for your convenience. Anyway, we have delta is equal to the minimum of one and something else, right? Based on this and this part of the inequality, we will be able to say the following. So let's just go ahead and write down. We know, based on this and that, the absolute value of x minus a will be less than 1. And you can imagine, if earlier we put down 1 half right here, then we just have to put down 1 half right here then. That's the idea. So, that's what we have. And this is what we're trying to get. And let's make an observation right here real quick. Let me put that down first. Absolute value of x plus a. And we must utilize this so that we can utilize the number 1. And the difference between this and that is just 2a. Check this out. Inside of the absolute value, I'm going to write that down first, x minus a. And then I'm just going to add the 2a to it. And here is going to be the triangle inequality, which says the absolute value of the sum. Namely, this is the first, and then this is the second. This right here is going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of the first. And then we add the absolute value of the second, which is the 2a right here. Ah, this is so, so, so clean. Well, you see, now we have this, which is legitimately less than 1. So we can just put down this is being less than 1. And then we can put the 2 outside of the absolute value. So this is just 1 plus 2 absolute value of a. And you'll see why this matters. Now we can come back here then. This is just going to be less than that, so we can just say that's delta from the previous part right here. And then this is that, which is 1 plus 2 absolute value of a. Well, keep in mind, eventually we want to end up with epsilon. So now, here is the final step. What is this delta going to be? Well, if we want to end up with epsilon, delta is just going to be epsilon over that guy, 1 plus 2 absolute value of a. And you see, this right here is so good because the bottom can never be zero. So that's one of the best part. And you see this right here times 1 plus 2 absolute value of a. Yes, of course, this and that cancel out nicely. Now we just have to write down delta being that to here. And we do have one little thing to take care of. What should this inequality be? Well, because delta is the minimum of this and that, so this inequality right here is going to be less than or equal to. Therefore, we are all done, so you can put on the box and shade this in. And now, if you would like to learn more about the calculus fundamentals, then you should definitely head to Brilliant. Brilliant is a math and science website and app with a focus on problem solving, they have over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. Their calculus fundamental courses will provide you with a solid understanding of the concept rather than just boring computations. I like their courses because they challenge me to think and let often provide a different point of view than what I already know. The best part is that they have something for everybody regardless of what your level is. You can get started with basic algebra or geometry or advanced topics like calculus, quantum computing, and better yet, you can use the link in the description brilliant.org slash blackpenredpen because that way you can get 20% off of their annual premium subscription. And thank you guys so much for checking them out and thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Wow, so much better, right? And thank you so much, Victor. And yeah. As I told you already, easy statements are frustrating to prove. And because of my previous mistake, I'm slightly more frustrated than before. <laughs> but all good.